Elvis died at the Florida Barber College. At the age of 10, I could not figure out what it was this Elvis Presley guy had that the rest of us boys didn't. I mean, he had a head, two arms, and two legs, just like the rest of us. Whatever it was that he had hidden away must have been pretty darn good, because he had every young girl at the orphanage wrapped around his little finger. About 9 o'clock on Saturday morning, I decided to ask Eugene Carruthers, one of the older boys, what it was that made this Elvis guy so special. He told me that it was Elvis's wavy hair and the way he moved his body. About a half an hour later, all the boys in the orphanage were called to the main dining room. We were told that we were going to downtown Jacksonville, Florida to get a new pair of Buster Brown shoes and a free haircut. That is when I got this big idea which hit me like a ton of bricks. If the Elvis haircut was the big secret, then that was what I was going to get. I talked about it all the way downtown. The Elvis haircut was what I was going to get. I told everybody, including the matron from the orphanage who was taking us. I was going to look just like Elvis Presley, and I would learn to move just like he did. One day, everyone would like me, and I would be rich and famous just like him. We arrived at the shoe store, and each orphan got a brand new pair of Buster Brown shoes. I was so very proud as I walked around the store because they really, really shined, and I'd never had a new pair of shoes before. I got in line with the rest of the boys, and we were told to place our shoes into this special machine. It would allow the sales clerk to see through our shoes to see if they fit correctly. When it was my turn, I stuck my shoes into the slots, and I looked down through the little eyepieces located on the top of the machine. How can that do that? I yelled when I saw the bones inside my feet. It's called a fluoroscope machine, answered the shoe store guy. I can see right through my shoes and even through my skin and it makes my bones and my feet look all green colored, I laughed. When we left the shoe store and headed to the barber shop, I could hardly wait for my new haircut. And now that I had my new Buster Brown shoes, I would be very happy to go back to the orphanage and practice being like Elvis. We finally arrived at the big barber shop where they cut our hair. Since we were orphans, we always got them cut for free. I guess they felt sorry for us or something. I ran up to one of the barber chairs and I climbed up onto the board the barber put across the arms to make me sit higher. I looked at the man and I said, I want an Elvis haircut. Can you make my hair look like Elvis? I said with a great big smile on my face. Let's just see what we can do for you, little boy, he said. I was so happy when he started to cut my hair. Just as he began to cut my hair, the matron motioned for him to come over to where she was standing. She whispered something into his ear that I couldn't hear. He shook his head back and forth as if he were telling her no. Then she had a mad look on her face and she walked over to another man who was sitting in the small office and said something to him. Then the little man walked over and said something to the barber who was cutting my hair. The next thing I knew, the barber was telling me that they were not allowed to give us orphans Elvis Presley haircuts. In the large mirror, I saw him put this big black comb thing on the end of the clippers. I saw my hair fall onto the floor each and every time he made a swipe across my head. When he finished shaving my hair off, he made me smell real good with this powdered stuff. Then he handed me a nickel out of his pocket and told me to go outside to the cracker machine and buy myself a candy bar. I handed him the nickel back and I told him that I was not hungry. I'm so sorry, baby, he said as I climbed out of the chair. I'm not a little baby, I said as I wiped the tears from my eyes. I sat down on the floor and brushed the hair off my new Buster Brown shoes so they would stay shiny and new. I got up, brushed off my short pants, and walked toward the door. The matron had a mean look on her face and a really funny smile. The man who cut my hair walked over to her and he said, Lady, you know, you're just a damn bitch. She yelled back at him and then she went to the office again. The barber man turned around and he hit the wall with his fist as hard as he could. Then he walked outside. He stood against the brick wall smoking a cigarette. A couple of minutes later I walked outside and stood directly beside him. I didn't say a word for fear of crying. He looked down, he had tears in his eyes, and he smiled at me and then he patted me on the top of my bald head. With tears running down my cheeks. I looked at him and I asked, 
Would you happen to know if, if Elvis Presley has green bones like me?